ஸ்ரீ ஷண்மத அத்வைத் நிர்தாரண சார்வபௌமா அட்ரிபியூட் டு கிரேட் ஆச்சாரியா ஸ்ரீ சங்கராச்சாரியா ஸ்ரீ சங்கர பகவத் பாத an avatar purusha by a humble devotee om shankara har har shankara as i climbed jyoteshwar temple at kashmir thought i will see you i was counting the steps to go up and after going up 243 plus 10 steps i saw a beautiful shivalinga but the temple is named after you here where you attained sarvagyana pitha i learned that you traveled all the way from kerala to kashmir barefooted got to know many a thing about great soul and was astonished as devotee of shiva i wanted to know more about you i traveled through your life philosophy and gifts you showered on us when shiva guru and aryamba worshiped lord shiva for a child shiva granted them a boon to choose a mediocre son who would live a long life or an extraordinary son who would not live long the couple chose the latter the son was named shankara in honor of the lord shiva and that was you many think you were born middle of 8th century in the 14th year of the reign of vikrama aditya vikrama aditya was the king of chalukya dynasty of badami vikrama aditya 2 your avatar brought great change in the society and in the lives of millions you are born at the time of late classical hinduism it was a time of social and cultural change as the ideas of buddhism jainism and vedic traditions were competing for its supremacy an avatar was essential to scrap the differences It is said that Lord Shiva was requested to help the mankind when the spiritualism was at its lowest edge you promised to be born along with other deities like Brahma and Indra for the emancipation of the human race you descended on the earth when you were born in the southern state of Kerala Kaladi as is known today mother initiated you in studenthood as you lost your father at a young age took permission from her to embrace sanyas and started your educational pursuits under your guru govinda pada to study vedas upanishads and brahma sutras you learned from your guru Gaudapadiya Karika and authored several key works you met great scholars of Mimamsa school of Hinduism Kumarila and Prabhakara Mandana and various Buddhists and debated people and scholars on various issues in Shastra Ratha a public debate place when you were hardly 8 you recited kanakadhara stotram when a poor lady offered you an amla fruit seeing her condition on completion of the stotram golden amla ka fruits were showered upon the woman by the goddess lakshmi what a divine gift by you one fine day a group of rishis came and reminded you the reason behind your birth 
understanding the situation you stepped into the river a crocodile caught your foot on taking the vow to observe austerity it disappeared and you took to sanyas your big vijay bharat yatra was barefooted and sometimes alone you participated in public philosophical debates with different orthodox schools such as buddhist jains arhats saugatas and karvakas was it tough to travel from kanyakumari to kashmir and gujarat to bengal your life journey included diverse journeys pilgrimages public debates literary works of repute and bhashyams of many vedic scriptures installation of yantras and lingas establishing philosophical schools of thought as well as the founding of monastic centers and in north east west and south india you completed your brahma sutras bhashyam at the age of 16 on the way one old brahman argued with you on your work for days astonished with the intelligence of the man you recognized him to be vyasa himself took ashirwad from him to spread the knowledge of the advaita around the world you started many monasteries that are called mathas today with advaita notions they are bharati at shringeri saraswati at kanchi tirtha and asramin at dwaraka you also visited giri puri vana aranya parvata and sagara inscribed your thoughts and philosophy everywhere you went you had a number of disciples who were scholars of repute padmapada also called sanadana associated with the text atmabodha sureshwara totaka chitsukha prithvi vidhara sid vilasayati bodhendra brahme mendra and sadananda who wrote about you and advaita vedanta each of your mat had a shishya direction name vakya veda and sampradaya hastamalakyaacharya was in the east at govardhan peetham following rigveda in accordance with bhogavala sampradaya establishing the mahavakya prajnan brahma consciousness is brahma hastamalaka was named by you when you heard him explain the essence of truth like a gooseberry in one's palm was as lovely as cupid as illustrious as the sun pleasant like the moon and patient like the earth but never learnt anything he had the knowledge because he had the soul of a great sage your disciple sureshwara managed singeri sharda peetham at south establishing aham brahmasmi i am brahman as mahavakya and preached yajurveda following bhurivala sampradaya even today goddess saraswati guards us all sitting there sri sureshwara charya was a great scholar and a philosopher of repute mandana mishra and vartika kara as he was known was the tape recorder he could reproduce exactly word for word what you had said he faithfully transferred the knowledge of yours keeping in pure for the generations 
Mandana Mishra had intelligent wife in Ubhaya Bharati. Both were avatars of Brahma and Saraswati, had an argument with you, became your disciple and followed you in your spiritual journey. Ubhaya Bharati regained her celestial form as Saraswati Devi at Sringeri. Padmapada was at Dwarka Pitham in the west establishing the Mahavakya Tattva Masi that thou art following Samaveda and Kitavala Sampradaya. His footprints along with yours we can feel even today. Padmapada literally means the one with lotus feet. You gave the name. On one of your travels, you set up a camp at a beautiful lake. He was on the other side of the river bank. On your calling, he ran across the lake. A lotus sprang up to support him wherever his feet touched. Your disciple, Totacharya, managed Jyotirmatha Pitam at north and established the Mahavakya. I am Atma Brahma. This Atma is Brahman, following Atharvana Veda in Nandavala Sampradaya. Your vision and mission are upheld even today. Giri became Totacharya with utmost devotion to you. An imbecile by birth but great in adoration for you became embarrassment to all, made him a class apart. With a spiritual flash from you, he became a great intellect at par with others. You introduced the Panchayatana form of worship, the simultaneous worship of five deities, Ganesha, Surya, Vishnu, Shiva and Devi. You explained that they are the different forms of the one Brahman, the invisible supreme being whom we call Ishvara. You influenced reforming Hinduism, founding monasteries, edifying disciples, disputing opponents and engaging in philosophic activity that revived the orthodox idea of the unity of all beings and Vedanta thought, which is supreme, real and self-realization. The self-realization, soul knowledge, you described as cataphatically positive liberation, freedom through knowledge, jivan mukti, moksha as well as apophatically removal of ignorance, negation of duality, negation of division between people or souls or spirit matter. You are regarded as the founder of the Dasan. Nami, Sampradaya and Shanmata. You unified the thesis sects into a common framework of Shanmata system. Saivam, Vaishnavam, Shaktam, Sauryam, Ganapatyam and Skandam. You being the avatara yourself brought everyone under one roof. Your works are the foundation of Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism. Your doctrine inspired the modern Indian thought. You wrote over 300 literary works which include commentaries, original philosophical expositions and poetry. You are known for your systematic reviews and commentaries. You lauded work in Brahma Sutra Bhashyam which makes you stand apart. You are a giant in the field of literature and master in the school of Advaita philosophy. Your commentaries on primary Upanishads are considered authentic by scholars. Bhashya on the Brihadanaranya, the Chandogya, the Aitareya, the Taitriya, the Kena, the Isha, the Katha, the 
Mundaka, the Prashna and the Mandukya Upanishad, which is a bhashya on Mandukya Karikas by Gaudapada. Even today, many read your commentary on Bhagavad Gita, your Vivarana on Vedavyasa's Yoga Sutras and Apastamba Dharma Sutras. We recite your stotras like Dakshina Murti, the Bhaja Govinda, the Shivananda Lahari, Karpata, Vishnu, Saptapadi, the Harimida, the Dasa Shloki, and Krishna Shloka. Your most important original philosophical work was Upadesha Sahastri. Your other original prakaranas like monographs and treatises are 76. Your stotras on Krishna, Vaishnavism, and one to Shiva, Shaivism, essentially are Advaitic and reach for a unified universal view of Vedanta. You composed Manish Shah Panchakam when you prostrated an untouchable, perceiving his argument when he was asked to set aside, he questioned whether he should set aside his soul or soul. You understood that he was none other than Lord Shiva himself. Your Ashtakams are so popular and divine that each gives a message. Kalabhairava Ashtakam praises Lord of Kashi, saying that he is merciful. Kasi Panchakam gives the real knowledge of the soul and pacifier of the mind. Kopina Panchakam makes you think about words of philosophy and get satisfied. Maya Panchakam gives the differences between the soul and the master of universe. Nirvana Manjari makes us feel I am by nature Shiva, the effluent entity. Irvana Satakam tells me that I am Shiva, the all-pervading happens. Parapuja Stotram makes us learn about a form that is beyond imagination. Pratha Smarana Stotram tells the fact that I am that stainless Brahman. Sadhana Panchakam emphasizes to cultivate knowledge of the soul. Shankara's Dasha Sloki, transcendent, I am simply Shiva, the Self. Shadpati makes us pray the lotus like feet of Vishnu to remove fear and sorrow. Shiva Paratha Kshamapana Stotram allows me to be pardoned my fault and sins. Sri Ranganadashtakam asks us to salute the Lord of Ranga. All your stotras are recited in every temple, always by everyone with rapt attention and devotion. You consolidated and applied unique exegetical method called Anvaya Vyatik Reka to accept only meanings that are compatible with all characteristics like Upakarma introductory statement and Upasamhara conclusions, Abhyasa and Apurvata, Phala and Ardhavada and Yukti verifiable reasoning. In your text Upadesha Sahasri you discouraged ritual worship and reiterated that one who knows the Brahman has self-knowledge and observes yamas such as ahimsa and niyamas. Rituals and rites such as yajna can help the journey to self-knowledge. Your Aparokhya Nubhuti in 144 stanzas about the absolute truth Brahman uses logic to prove that the holy and the body is an illusion and that Brahman or the absolute truth is that which is beyond all bodies. 
you also say that ignorance is the cause of illusion your dwadasa manjarika stotra along with chaturdasa manjarika stotra of your disciples became your famous bhaja govindam stotram you started as bhaja govindam bhaja govindam bhaja govindam so worship govinda worship govinda worship govinda o fool rules of grammar will not save you at the time of your death you systematized the works of preceding philosophers your system marks a turn from realism to idealism your advaita interpretation postulates the identity of the self and brahman and ordered the sannyamis to follow the same as interpreted you believe in practice and practice alone brings discipline and your advaita vedanta is based on shastra scriptures yukti reasoning anubhava experiential knowledge and karma spiritual practices this takes us near to god and valuable life this is your gift to us your advaita non dualism means that there is only one supreme reality a reality called brahman the supreme being by unreal is meant illusory very much like a dream avidya the original spiritual ignorance mistakenly believe that we are limited individuals you explored the practical application of advaita vedanta as gyana yoga the yoga of knowledge or wisdom it is the direct path to experiencing the truth of advaita meaning to realize our true self the atman gyana yoga the most difficult one as it is to reach the goal self realization you propagated sat chit ananda brahma sat means existence of pure and absolute chit means knowledge or consciousness pure and absolute ananda means bliss pure and absolute you considered the purity and steadiness of mind achieved in yoga as an aid to gaining moksha knowledge but such yogic state of mind cannot in itself give rise to such knowledge so we need to get into inquiry into the teachings of the upanishads you rejected that yoga system through thought suppression leads to liberation you placed great emphasis on the study of the upanishads emphasizing as necessary and sufficient means to gain self liberating knowledge the 108 muktika canon upanishad will liberate the self your advaita and buddhist madhya maka view of ultimate reality is compatible because they are both transcendental indescribable non dual and only arrived at through evaya negativa neti neti so mudgala says the difference between sunyavada and advaita may be a matter of emphasis but not of kind the advaita sampradaya is not a saiva sect advaitins are non sectarian and advocate worship of shiva and vishnu equally with that of the other deities like shakti ganapati and others it is realizing self along with god of oneness you visited tirupati and recited the sloka vishnu patati che kanta stotra which describes the lord from his foot to the head you also established an yantra from that day the number of followers of the temple increased and is increasing today is the second largest of the temple in the world where devotees throng you created two sets of earrings which are called tataka 
and presented these to goddess Akhilandeshwari at Tiruvanikkar near Tiruchi. The fierceness of the deity reduced and all devotees were very happy. Your power of understanding devotees was marvelous. You wrote Sivananda Lahari at Sri Salem just having darshan of Lord Shiva. Lord Mallikarjuna made you ascetic and the words just flowed from you. At Hatakeshwaran forest, you did penance for many years. When Kirakeshan wanted to behead you, Lord Narzimha appeared and killed him. When you completed your travels and went to Badrinath, Lord Vishnu appeared before you and told you to take out his sculpture in Alaknanda river and a temple to be built for him. Today it is one of the important religious places for Hindus as Badrinath Narayana temple. The teachings of yours can be summed up in half a word. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya Jeevo Brahma Maivana Aparaha Brahman He is alone real, this world is unreal and the Jeeva is non-different from Brahman. This is the quite essence of your philosophy. You presented the world the eternal, impersonal and conscious absolute is the Brahman, the one without a second. Karma and Bhakti help from a distance in the attainment of Jnana, your message, natural growth, assimilating what is compatible and coexistence. At young age of 2 and 30, you were hurry to join yourself. So you marched into Paramapadam at Kedarnath, which is your abode and lying in peace behind the present Shiva temple watching the whole world and warning sometimes, be good. When you decided to enter Samadhi, Sudhanava, the foremost disciple of yours, requested to summarize your teachings. You gave them in Dasa Shlokas, or ten verses, which elaborated the omniscience, omnipotence and omnipresence of Brahma the core concept of Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma. This is Lokas are The five elements do not express my real nature. I am changeless and persist forever. I am above castes and creeds. I am seen when Maya is removed and do not need concentration or worship as shown in Yoga Sutras. I have no parents, I need no Vedas as proclaimed in the scriptures, no sacrifices, no pilgrimages, I am the eternal witness. All the teachings of various religions and philosophies do not reveal my true nature and are but shallow views of my deep being. I pervade the whole universe and am above, in the middle and below in all directions. I am colorless, formless, light being my form. I have no teacher, scripture or any disciples, nor do I recognize thou or I or even the universe and changeless and the absolute knowledge. I am neither awake in deep sleep nor dreaming but above consciousness with which the three are associated. All these are due to ignorance and I am beyond that. I pervade everything, everywhere and the eternal reality and self-existent. The whole universe depends on me and become nothing without me. I cannot be called one for that implies two, which is not. I am neither isolated nor non-isolated. Neither I am empty or full. Om Shankara. Hara Hara Shankara.